Welcome, brothers and sisters, to today's edition of our ongoing orientation program to prepare those in the 2021 and 2022 masterclass to be able to uh, know what they are getting into and what it's all about. And those who are in the Global School of Ministry, this video will enable you to understand the curriculum that you're going to be studying during your period of uh, study in the class. So today, what we want to do is to uh, just unveil the reality that the curriculum of the Global School of Ministry, which is also used by the master class, what is it all about? It is simply a process for betting the Melchizedek priesthood and activating authentic kingdom culture worldwide. So just bear these two things in mind because all the courses you're going to be doing, they are all aspects of one central whole, which is the Melchizedek priesthood that has been lost since the 4th century, and kingdom culture, which also has been lost since the 4th century. The spirit of religion has been the predominant expression of Christianity in the world, and the Lord is doing something revolutionary through a process we are not the only one, there are other agencies of the kingdom and other places where the Lord is doing likewise. In our own case, it's what is articulated in the, in the curriculum I go through. And let us pray. Father in heaven, help us to just apprehend the reality of what you've committed to our trust, the reality of what you want those who have been enrolled to receive during this period they are in training. I pray that no one will carry old wine in old wineskins and cling to them that there will be an openness to what you will do by your spirit to deliver everyone from the spirit of religion and bring us into the realm of kingdom culture and get, bring us into the realm where we recapture the priesthood after the order of Melchizedek that your name may be glorified in Yeshua's name. Amen and amen. Brothers and sisters, there is an inconvenient truth that needs to be said, and that is Christian religion has been using the curriculum of dominant Bible college education and theological college education to perpetuate what the law revealed to be an error. What is it? Production of a male-dominated professional career clergy who mediate between a holy God and an unholy people called the laity. And no matter how you dress up this system and polish it with glitzy graduation rituals, it is inherently defective because it approaches ministry from an old covenant standpoint, which is God out there, the people out there, the people that are holy, God is holy, so the priest is the mediator between them. Brothers and sisters, the new covenant presents a radically different concept of ministry and priesthood. And the day Yeshua rose from the grave, a new chapter was opened for humanity. The middle wall of partition. Remember what happened when Yeshua said it is finished, the veil in the temple rent into two. And, brothers and sisters, what people don't often realize is that from that day he gave up the ghost, he said it is finished, and his resurrection, he canceled out the middle wall of partition so that but Jews and Gentiles, Hebrews, Greeks, all manner of people can be reconciled to the Father through the cross. And brothers and sisters, he himself is securely seated at the throne of grace in the heavenly realms as high priest of the new order of priesthood called the priesthood after the order of Melchizedek. Now the interesting thing is that even in orthodoxy, whether you look at the big orthodoxies and whether you're talking about the evangelical and Pentecostal orthodoxies, whenever they are ordaining priests, one of the songs is, Thou art a priest forever, after the order of Melchizedek, taken from the book of Psalms. Almost all, it doesn't matter, their denominational hue, they sing that song. But it's interesting that after singing that song, the whole purpose of the priestly ritual is to color people into perpetuating the priesthood after the order of Levi or the Aaronic priesthood or was still the Nimrodic priesthood. 
And so, brothers and sisters, we need to understand that one of the things the Lord wants to accomplish in the entry through the global school of ministry and the master class is the reality that there is a universal priesthood to which all believers are called. It's called the priesthood after the order of Melchizedek. Every true believer, redeemed by the blood, is called to serve him. Yeshua said in John 16, John 15, verse 16, You have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you that you should go and bring forth fruit, and that your fruit should remain. That whatsoever you shall ask of the Father in my name, he may give it to you. So every true believer is called. It's not something reserved for a few select. It's not something to be reserved for those who said they heard the voice of the Lord when they were sleeping. Every believer born again, inherent in that new birth experience, is a call of the Lord that you no longer live for yourself, but be a vessel in his hand. Number two, collectively, all believers become citizens of one kingdom nation and one royal priesthood. All, not some again, regardless of their races, their tribes, their ethnicities, their natural nationalities, nations where they were born, their gender or socioeconomic status, all are one kingdom priesthood, one royal priesthood and kingdom nation, and they are supposed to live as strangers and pilgrims among the people of the world. First Peter chapter 2, verse 9. A new I have chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a peculiar people. I should show for the praise of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. That's who we are. It's inherent. And that's why Yeshua said, you know, that you need to understand that collectively we are now citizens of one kingdom nation. We are one royal priesthood. Royal priesthood. That is the kind of priesthood we are called to. Three. To bring these two realities to pass, Yeshua gave to his church the fivefold to ensure that through the work of the fivefold, the church comes alive as a living, loving organism or body rather than a dead religious organization or corporation. Those of you who watch Sundays, what we do in Arise Metropolitan Assembly, or the otherwise called Arise Online Church with our walls, is simply an expression of this reality. You know, that the fivefold is given to collectively apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers, when they impact a flock, a congregation, a group of Christians, very rapidly, the gifts and callings of the people are activated. We're not yet fully where we ought to be, but you can have a picture when you come on Sundays to watch on Zoom how we do church. It's about the body. So Ephesians 4.11 and he, that's Yeshua, gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and some teachers. For what reason? For the perfecting of the saints, verse 12. For the work of the ministry. For the defying of the body. Till we all come into the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of Elohim unto a perfect man unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Yeshua, that we should henceforth be no more children tossed to a fraud, carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slit of men and cunning craftiness, whereby they lie in wait to deceive. But speaking the truth in love, may grow up into him in all things which is the head, even Yeshua, who from whom the whole body fitly joined together and compacted by which every joint supplies according to the effectual working in the measure of every part, make it increase of the body until they define of itself in love. Ephesians 4, 11 to 16 is the mandate of the fivefold. They, whatever they are received and accepted, not just apostle. You go to some place, say apostle, so, so, and so, and that is it. Every other fivefold gifted missing in action. You see somewhere, a prophet, so, so, and so, every other gifted missing no, the Lord's plan is the fivefold, collectively impacting upon the saints, activating what is in them, so they take their part as a, the organic body, not organization that you join, but the organic body is activated. 
So in number four then, in the Global School of Ministry and the Global Advanced Mentorship Program, which is a master class, we are taught and learn the truth of the Holy Scriptures line by line, precept upon precept, rather than the opinions of human experts or dogmas of religious denominations. So through the Digging Deep series, we understand the teachings of Yeshua, his life and ministry, and through the courses that are taught by me, you know what, we understand the Pauline epistles which constitute the master plan of the church. And so in Isaiah 28, the Digging Deep series, what you get there is for precept must be upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little, and there a little, but the word of the Lord, you know, just if you stop there, Isaiah 28, 12, so the word is broken down, and we're told in 2 Timothy chapter 2, 15, study, to show yourself approved unto Elohim, a workman who does not need to be ashamed rightly, dividing the word of truth. Why? 2 Timothy 3, 15 says, from a child, Paul told Timothy, thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith that is in Yeshua. All scripture is given by inspiration of Elohim, and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that a man of God, the man of Elohim, may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. So that's why there's a systematic breaking down of the world for you to understand. And then the Pauline epistles contain the master plan of the church. And since the fourth century, one of the scriptures that is ignored is 1 Corinthians 3, 10 to 15, and Ephesians 4, 11 to 16. What does 1 Corinthians 3, 10 says? According to the grace of God, which is given unto me as a wise master builder, Yeshua chose Paul as the master builder to commit the master plan of the church to. He said, I have laid the foundation, another builder thereupon. But let every man take heed how he build thereupon, for other foundation can no man lay than that which is laid, which is Yeshua. Now, if any man build upon that foundation gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, stubble, every man's work shall be made manifest, for the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire, and the fire shall try every man's work to see what sort it is. You either building with gold, silver, and precious stones, or wood, hay, and stubble. And so the polite epistles tell you how to do ministry. The way of gold, silver, precious stones. So when the fire of the Lord tries it, it comes forth brighter, better. And if you are not building according to the polite epistles, you are building religiously. Whenever it's tried by fire, the fire will consume it. And it says here that if any man's work by which he has built it thereupon, he shall receive a reward. If any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss, but he himself shall be saved, yes, so as by fire. In other words, there are two sets of Christians who stay on earth, outside the call of the Lord. One will build religiously with wood, hay, and stubble. The other will build kingdom uh, type of uh, ministry, gold, silver, precious stones. On the last day, when the fire of God tries the work, the person who will be with you know, uh, wood, hay, stubble, the fire of God will consume it. That person may manage to squeeze into the kingdom, but no rewards. But the person who built with the divine pattern, the divine principle, the divine substance, and did it the way the Lord was in his word, when it, not only will he make it, but there will be great reward. So there will be surprise on the last day. And that's why the Lord wants us to take a, a pay attention to what we are going to be studying in the master class because it can change your life radically. So there's a need to understand two basic operating principles. The first one is this, the centrality of Yeshua as the only bridge between Yahweh, our Father, and humanity. No other way. According to John 14, you must go through him. And those who receive Yeshua, they receive a uniqueness of the new creation our spirit man is seated with Yeshua in heavenly places. And here on earth, Holy Spirit makes us his temple. So, 
Yeshua is central. He is the center and circumference of the kingdom. You cannot preach anything other than him. You cannot do anything contrary to his word. Everything we do is judged by him. Yeshua, Christ in us, the hope of glory. The second reality is that everyone in Yeshua is uniquely gifted to release and receive virtues which ought to be activated and propelled by Holy Spirit. So it is important to now know that those who are born again, according to 2 Corinthians 5, 17, they are processed from the state of being new believers to become followers of this, or disciples of Yeshua. And then through systematic sound teaching, you know what? They are then trained, equipped, and mentored to walk as sons of the Most High. And that is why the Lord wants to, this week, unveil the curriculum and prospectus of the you know, master class for those in the class and those in the school of ministry, they you begin to understand why the curriculum is the way it is. Brothers and sisters, the two agencies, master class and global school, they are all instruments of promoting the kingdom culture in the entering. Let me explain the brief difference. The global school of ministry is a program, the curriculum that has been put together and with the revelation of the things you need to teach people, if you teach it to them, it will produce some outcome. Anybody can use it to start up a center anywhere in the world. You can start up an online center, start up one in your neighborhood, start up one in your community, start up one by any means, using any means you have. Some people are using online tools and they are teaching the school of ministry. Some are even doing it on WhatsApp. Two people in Zimbabwe, they do it on WhatsApp. Others do it with Facebook. And in different parts of the world, people do. The Global School of Ministry, you can do it anybody who is interested to make sure that the people don't remain religious people, that they become servants of the Most High. The master class is when Pastor Grace and I personally take part of the curriculum and use it to instruct, to teach, train, equip, activate, and release. We're going to explain those terms to you. When we do that, that's master class. And then those who have done the master class, like Apostle John Ashu in Ireland, they are giving permission. You too can run a master class. You either run a master class or a global school of ministry center. And the idea, brothers and sisters, is to provide leaders through the curriculum, leaders whose hearts are inclined to know and to do the will of Elohim, they need support. So we provide them support in the form of materials to use those materials to train the people the Lord has given to them. And so the Lord told us something, that one of the greatest barriers to the emergence of the Melchizedek priesthood or the royal priesthood as a potent, you know, reminder of the lordship of Yeshua is not Satan. Satan has, look, with the resurrection of Yeshua, Satan lost it. So Satan is not the one who stops the work of the Lord. The work of the Lord is now stopped by pastors and leaders who are still insisting on doing things religiously the way they, were, they knew 17 years ago, 28 years ago. And they're insisting on doing it that old way. They're not open. The Bible tells us of the Pharisees who were open to understand the, the things Yeshua taught, he said they were wise. They could bring forth out of their treasure new and old. So the Lord is saying to, if you're a minister, don't presume you know. No, life is too precious to presume. We're going to give you the tools. And if you are available, say to you, stay with us and see what the Lord has put together as a curriculum. And when you meet a, a, a graduate of the master class, one who has gone through the master class or school of ministry, Please, no matter how young they are, or male or female, listen to them because there's something they have received inside of them. So, most leaders gravitate towards either being what we call Nimrodic paradigm of ministry, where a man owns the church, owns the people, owns the resources in their hand, and in, in other words, they are there for him. And he uses them, fleeces them to live the lifestyle he wants to live. This is predominant in some parts of the world. I don't need to name it. Then you have the Levitical paradigm where people, you know, the church is presented as owning the people, 
The church is the owner of the people. You join the church. You put your name in the membership roster. So if you tithe well, it is seen there. If you don't tithe well, it's there. And the title will determine what benefits you get. And that is very Levitical. And there are many churches where the pastors are super anointed, but they are running Nimrodic and Levitical systems. And the result is that everybody, it can be, people can receive benefits from the church on the basis of what you know, is in their tight register, in their offering register. Brothers and sisters, that is not the way the Lord wants. These priesthood patterns are opposed to God's pattern. The priesthood pattern of the Lord is the priesthood after the order of Melchizedek, to which he calls everyone. And the Revelation 1, uh, 6, and Revelation 5, 10, we are told that he has made us to be priests, kings and priests, and we will reign with him. And we need to start the dress rehearsal here. Now, that doesn't mean we'll have leadership. Some people take it that, okay, because we're not running because of the priesthood, it means there's no leadership. Everybody, whatever you want, believe it, hold on to it. If you believe that, you believe the lie. No, there's still leadership. There are those the Lord will ordain to be pioneers of ministry, and there are those he's going to give oversight of ministries, and yet everybody's called. So there's primal type of calling, frontline type of calling, and there's supportive type of calling, and there are those who have, you know, they, they are hybrid. They have visionary work, and they still have supportive. So we got to know, and what the Lord requires of leaders is this. Your duty as a leader is not to lord it over the people and own them. Your duty is to challenge them to righteousness. Show them the way. Let them see Yeshua in you. See the passion for the kingdom in you. And you point them to him. They reconcile to him. They grow up into him in all things. And then you become an instrument of empowering the people to discover who they are in him and their part in him. And when you are doing so, you are doing well. So when you see people who do not build up and they just cut out, oh, no, it doesn't matter. Everybody do whatever you like. The Bible says in the book of Romans 16, 17, Now I beseech you, brethren, mark them that cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which you have learned and avoid them. Avoid them. When you see people who are not under authority, they want authority, legitimate authority, but they don't want to submit to the authority of whoever is the leader, overseer, or the person the Lord has put in turn, you met a dangerous fellow. Brothers and sisters, these things are organic. And you can't cherry pick which one. So it is important to understand that any leader who is afraid to implement the vision of Yeshua for a royal priesthood, that person is doing a disservice to himself. And that's dangerous. Brothers and sisters, the Lord wants us to know the prayer that Yeshua prayed. Matthew chapter 9, 37 to 38. Then said he unto his disciples, The harvest truly is plenteous, but the laborers are few. Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest, that they will send forth laborers into his harvest. But brothers and sisters, the very laborers we are praying for, binding the heavens for, losing the heavens for, Lord, bring us more laborers. The Lord said, look, they are right there in the pew. They are just kept in the pew as a dormant laity. The Lord said, look up. Instead of praying for more laborers to come, the Lord said, those who are inside, turn them to laborers. And there's a process for doing that. And that process is part of what we are studying in the master class and in the, and in the global school of ministry. And so, brothers and sisters, it is important to understand that successful ministry is not one where somebody is able to gather a crowd of milk drinking babes around him or her who are spectators to come and watch a performance by the minister. Successful ministry is rather one in which the Lord uses the leader to empower all that are brought to him empower them to know their identity in the Lord, to know their assignment in the kingdom, and to begin to do it, and that is what it is. So that is why we want to assure you, the Global School of Ministry and the Global Advanced Mentorship Program, the Masterclass, they are not for a special category of people. They are for all believers. Anyone who is born again is qualified. And now, there are seven categories of people that can profit from the Global School of Ministry and the Masterclass. Number one, any Christian who has known Yeshua, 
through the new birth experience, you are born again. That's your qualification. And you love him enough. You want to submit yourself to serve him. That's number one. You have a place. In the master class is full right now. That's they are not admitting new people. You can then do it with us live blogging. But if you can't do it in the classroom, because it is the highest expression of the master class, is in the classroom on Facebook where the director of studies, Dr. Catherine Jones, and the principal officers and the mentors impact you in a very special way, and you get to know other brethren, get to know these people, so that any time you don't know where the Lord will take you, you are part of a community. So if you are born again, you are qualified. Number two. You may be in full-time ministry already or part-time ministry, but you realize that there are many things you don't know. Welcome. This is for you. Number three, you will be a church worker or an officer in the church, and you realize that, look, you've been doing many things, but you've not got training. Or the training you've got is this kind of three weeks thing. They give you a piece of paper and call it a, you know, a, a, a vacation Bible school. Three weeks for ministry? Oh, my God. You know, we really need to be very careful how we chip on the things of the kingdom. Our Lord deserves much more. You don't give somebody a three-week training and call him a minister. No, that's a refresher program. When you are invited to a refresher program, yes, but other than that, you don't go and use three, three, three months or three weeks and say you train somebody. No. So somebody who's a church worker or an officer, you realize that you've not really got any real training. You can enroll. Number four, you may be a believer who is rusty in the pew in the church due to lack of engagement. You don't know your gift. You don't know your calling. If you ask your spiritual gifts out of the spiritual gifts that are in the Bible, which one is your own? In the book of Romans, chapter 12, 1 Corinthians 12, Ephesians 4, you know, 1 Peter chapter uh, 4, and all the other places out of about 20 something spiritual gifts which one are yours you don't know and yet you are in the church you have been a believer for 10 years no come to the school of ministry come to know your gifts and callings number five you may be a young christian or you may be somebody come new you are born again you know what you are baptized praise the lord you are on even if you are not baptized if you sign in through the teachings, you get to know what baptism is and you can submit yourself and you'll be given the opportunity to be baptized in water, not infant baptism. Number six, the curriculum is also for, let's say, overseers or churches or pastors who have people who work with them, they give them this assignment, do this, do that, but they don't have the training and they are not ordained. And you get to a church, the only ordained person is the overseer or the pastor. Say no. The Lord, you know, Jethro spoke to Moses. He said, Moses, what are you doing? Only you judging all this from morning till night? No, you break down. He said, no, look out among them people. The Lord says, if you're a leader, you can come and train and then take the training to go and train the people. Or you can send them for training and they can come. And when they are finished and you know their character and they, their character is good, you know it, you can then ordain them into ministry if you want. Or if you want, we can handle the ordination for you. Then number seven, the curriculum is especially useful for training saints in the marketplace. That is those who are public servants, those who are in their own businesses, those who are in employment, those who are serving anywhere other than in the church building. We call it marketplace. Whether you are, in, you know, you are in public service, you are a senator, you are a congressman, you are a president, you are a prime minister, you are a governor, you are a mayor, whatever you are doing, or you are a business person with your own business, or you are in employment, or you are a professional, all these people we call them marketplace. You come and get the training to discover that the saints in the marketplace of old were holier than those who were patriarchs. Abraham. Under pressure concerning his wife Sarah, he lied. Moses, under pressure, he got so angry and he struck the rock and missed the promised land. Under pressure, Elijah fainted. Under pressure, Elisha had issues and, you know, asked, you know, that because young people mocked him, he excised vengeance and lions came and tore them up. But you know what? The holiest men and women in the Bible go and look for Joseph. No record of sin. Daniel, no record of sin. The, you know, 
Nehemiah, no record of sin. Esther, no record of sin. Why? The Lord told me the mystery. It's in the book, you know, the course, Marketplace Ministry. I urge you all to really get to understand. If you're in the marketplace, you don't need to, you know, resign your job to go and get training. No. Just one day, out, one hour out of 24 hours a day, make it out to watch the video, read the teaching notes, that's all we require of you. For the period of the training, that's all. So in other words, you can, one hour each day without even telling anybody, you can finish your training and discover that your business, your job is your own altar, is your own pulpit, and you can be an effective ambassador of Yeshua right from there. So brothers and sisters, we also want to say this to you, no matter where you are in the journey of faith, you can profit from really getting trained in the master class on the Global School of Ministry. And I want to say something. The model that we developed at Arise is a model where everybody who comes to church is enrolled for School of Ministry. Why? Because we recognize everybody's called. So from the day you come, you go through the process. We normally do service. After service, we start the School of Ministry with a 30 minutes break normally, but because of the lockdown, after we finish Zoom around 4 or after 4, we wait till about 5 days. You give people a break of about 1 hour, 1 hour, 15 minutes, grab a bite, and they will come back. And in so doing, each time, each week, each month, we are going to us. And the time comes, it's time for the nation, a time for releasing of people when they have gotten enough by the grace of the Lord. And brothers and sisters, I want to say this to you. That principle is so important. But you know what? So within about two years, one and a half years and two and one and a half years and two years, almost everybody who has come to the church is ready for the nation. Apart from those who are not serious or who, you know, omit, you know, they skip the school of ministry. But those who are consistent and persistent within one and a half to two years, they will, normally will have finished. It's just that the, 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 the pandemic disrupted a few things that were originally planned. But you know what? In this spring, by the grace of the Lord, a few people who have truly gone through the process were going to be, you know, passing them out and ordaining them into ministry. But we need to say this. Every congregation and every ministry and every minister has a right to determine how long they want. After all, our Lord Yeshua himself, you know how long it took him? Three and a half years. From the day he called Peter, James, and John, in Matthew chapter 4, from 17 to 23, from that day, then he called the others till the day he finished with them and went to the cross. And then after that, he asked them to wait for the promise of the Father. It was about three and a half years to prepare them for the great work. And that's why when he unleashed them, he turned the world upside down. So, brothers, there are seven benchmarks by which you can assess yourself whether this course is truly having its impact in your life. Number one, the level of intimacy with the Lord achieved over the training period. Are you getting more intimate with the Lord, loving Him, pressing into the fullness of Him? Number two, how much you place quest for the kingdom and its righteousness above every other thing. As Matthew chapter 6, 33, 34 says, have you come to the place where the kingdom is more important to you? That as we saw in the church today, that you are willing to sell all else for it. You don't subordinate anything to the kingdom. Neither spouse, nor children, neither parents, nor job, nor career, nor life. Everything, the kingdom, the king and his kingdom first. That's the second benchmark. When has that happened in you? Number three, how tender is your heart becoming? As Isaiah 66, 1 and 2 says, how tender are you that things happen, you are tender. You tremble at the word of God. You do something without anybody telling you your conscience is alive. And maybe you bought it for one hour. Then Holy Spirit just shows you how wrong you were. You immediately run to the Lord to make your way right with him. How tender is it becoming? Number four, how holy are you yielded to Yeshua? To consciously enthrone him as king. And submit to Holy Spirit in all things, Romans 8, 14, that whatever you want to do, what Holy Spirit says you do. You may have gone to do a sermon, 
and go to the pulpit, Holy Spirit leads you elsewhere. Are you going to be, you know, worried and cling to what you have written, or are you going to do what He says? You see, when you come to the place where Holy Spirit is a primary leader, leader and driver of your life, you have come to a place where truly you are in, you are preaching in kingdom reality. Then number five, your attitude to ch challenges of life and actions, or reactions to other people. Things happen, normally you don't like it. How do you handle? How does your emotion handle? Do you begin to have into a volcano, volcano just sounding inside, waiting to spew out like a lava? Is that what you do? After some time, these things, you need to come to a place to know that that's the danger inside of you. And you give it right away to truly, the Lord to take it away. Because the wrath of man does not walk the righteousness of Elohim. Number five, your attitude to challenges of life. Sorry, number six, the quality of stewardship of divine blessings. The Lord gives money. Do you regard it as the Lord giving or you getting it by your power? If it's the Lord, do you allow him to guide you and lead you on how to spend that which he puts in your heart? Or do you use your high sense to make the decisions if you lead yourself, that is not his own, it's your strength. But if he gave it to you, then we're impelled and compelled to hear from him concerning his priorities and what to do. Not everything that comes into your hand is bread to eat. He gives bread and he also gives seed. And it's by discernment of the voice of the Holy Spirit that you know whether this is seed or this is bread. So that you, you sow seed and you eat bread. That is the world, the kingdom. How, when these things begin to happen in your life, do you clutch at things and things only go one way, all just get from people, get from people, and nothing flows out of you, then you know that they're in trouble. Number six, the quality of, sorry, number seven, how much you place your faith in Yahweh as a father, hope in him, and love him, and his sins are growing. Is your love of the father growing? Is your love of the sins growing? That's why we use what is called the TTA process in all that we do, whether online or live meeting, TTA process. T, teach every saint the word of the Lord as constitution of the kingdom. So a systematic understanding of the Holy Scriptures is the basis of making disciples as Matthew 28, 18 to 20 says. So applying and rightly dividing the word it enables people to come to a place they become disciples. The world, you know, renews the mind and transforms the heart. So teaching, which covers all aspects of the world, is one of the things we do in this commission. We teach the world. We teach the world, brothers. Two, train the believers. Train them to the degree that after a cycle of time, they have completed a curriculum to join the harvest field. So what's the difference between teaching and training? They look similar. In teaching, you teach the whole Bible. And you can teach the Bible for 30 years and you still haven't finished teaching it. The training is when you take a definite curriculum that, okay, you're going to teach this number of courses over this period of time, which will deliver this outcome. Whenever you finish that teaching, those series of teachings, those courses over the period of time, it produces an outcome. So that's the second thing we do. So we train people to be ministers of the gospel according to the order of Melchizedek. Number three, we equip them with a proper understanding, and that understanding is both Elohim. They understand Elohim as God, as Father, as everything to them. They understand the church, what the church is. It's not an organization. It's an organism. They understand even the devil know that he's a created being. He has an expiry date. And therefore, they know the works of darkness and how to resist him. We also know through the training that our kingdom identity as kingdom citizens and ambassadors, who we are in Yeshua, who is in us. Then number four, we activate the gifts and callings of the Holy Spirit that are inside. Many people have gifts and callings, but they are dormant. And so how do you activate? You activate by speaking into that which you see as a leader. You speak into that. There's something in them that jumps up. The gift and calling inside of them, a response to the voice of the one that is a shepherd the Lord has given. 
over them, not illegitimate people. A lot of people have a lot of illegitimate leadership, speaking all kinds of junk into their ears. The Lord himself gives us shepherds after his heart, whose job is to empower us. So, activation includes that affirmation by the leader. It includes prophetic words. It also includes laying on of hands to stir up what is inside. And then as you respond to that activation by prayer and consecration, the grace of the Lord begins to move. There are a lot of people who theoretically know a lot about their gifts, but they are in practice. They are nowhere, not even 5%. And the reason is that they are too scattered in their mind and their emotion. They are too scattered. Their emotion is too raw that they are not able to really bring it together to discipline themselves to receive direction and leadership. The result is they have these wonderful gifts, but it's not utilized. They can talk on Facebook, on social media, Instagram, but in reality, they are not able to truly impact anyone because they are operating in a lot of assumption in their mind. And then number five is to release them. It comes a day when people have done the training and satisfactorily so. You know what? A day comes, hands are laid on them and they are released to serve the Lord. That's not a release to go and do whatever you like. No. It's a release to serve the Lord. And the leader who the Lord puts in your life, you serve. You discover your gifts and calling, you co-labor with them. And if the Lord wants to use you at any time, there will be no drama. He will be, he will make it so clear. It won't be a subject of your ambition. You want to compete with your leader. You want to show your leader that you can do the same thing. No, that's canal. Or you have an offense or hurt against somebody and you go out of that hurt or offense. It's, everything you do out of hurt and offense at the end of the day is standing at the gate of eternity to condemn the person. No, that's why it's important in the kingdom church. We don't do this cut that confusion people do. No, you have a, a, a call, you know, first level call. The Lord wants you to be faithful in that which he has given another person as leader and you take your place because this idea that people are getting off to do their own is not going up. That is the issue. It's based on the wrong paradigm of ministry as a building. You be you are leader over all people you gather for yourself or a ministry with your name and your identity. You know what? And the Lord may have nothing to do with it. If the Lord is the King of Kings and He has given the fivefold, why would somebody call, let's say, with a mantle the Lord gives to you a call. Let's say you are the pastor in the house. No, no, no. Let me go and do my own. Let me go and do. You run to do your own. And where is the apostolic? Nowhere. Where is the prophetic? Nowhere. Where is the evangelistic? Nowhere. Where is the teaching? Nowhere. You just want to have somewhere. People around you, 50 people come, call you daddy, call you mommy, you are happy. Or you are the one with the prophetic mantle. You run off with that mantle, and you are the mono gift ministry. No way. Or you are the evangelist. Instead of coming to bring it to way in so we can have the fivefold doing the work and people being blessed, you run off with your own, you know what it's called? Laceration. It's laceration anointing. You are lacerating the body. You are dividing up the body. And the head of the body, Yeshua, will never tell you well done for lacerating the body. There will be surprises in eternity. Brothers and sisters, a lot of people don't seem to understand the things of the Most High. So if you are called to another work, the Lord will do it like in Acts 13. Now there was in the church that was at Antioch, certain prophets and teachers as Barnabas and Simeon that was called Niger uh, and the Lucius of Cyrene and Manen, which had been brought up with Herod the, Tet Herod the Tetrarch and Saul. As they ministered to the Lord, and fasted, the Holy Ghost said, Separate me, Barnabas and Saul, for the work what ought to have called them. And when they are fasted and prayed, they laid their hands on them and sent them away. Brothers and sisters, so they being sent away, being sent forth by the Holy Ghost, they parted unto Seleucia, and from thence they sailed to Cyrus. In other words, when the Lord wants somebody to do a new work, he will do it well. There will be order. There will be no confusion, no accusations, no lies. Simple, uncomplicated. The people are brought and lay hands on it and prayed for. And they are not going to do a mono ministry. They are going to reproduce that gracious thing. So kingdom culture is spread. 
the way of the kingdom, the life of the king that is going up through his vessels. And so, brothers and sisters, that's what we're going to study. That's what it's all about. I want you to open your heart. If you have questions, always feel free to ask your questions. Blog along every day like this one. Blog along what you have received. Blog along. Answer the questions. And the soul will be learning. Because when you are blogging, you are bringing out of your spirit man what you just dropped in. You know, it brings about. It's a way of learning. And it helps you a lot. And I want to say this to you this week. We're going to bring down the curriculum for you. That this is what we're going to. This is what the full curriculum is. From Monday to Friday. This is the full curriculum. And then at some point, we'll tell you the things we're going to study in this particular year. So don't be intimidated. The first set of things is what the whole curriculum is. And then the second part is what we're going to study in this particular uh, training year. And the mentors are there to support you. The principal officers, the director of studies, they'll be in the classroom to support you if you are there. If you, are, you didn't make it to the classroom, you can do the master class just being with us here like you are right now. You are blogging along. Your name is enrolled. You write your name and you're sitting where you are. Okay, that's it. I will take note of these things. And you have any questions, you can send them to us or you can leave it on the, on the, on the, on the, on the blog that you are doing, and we'll pick it up from there. You know what? I want you to, today, why not share this video? Share, let people know what we're about. What we truly do, and what we're about, is to create manpower for the final harvest. That every Christian is exposed to training, you know, that Satan will be in trouble. Can you imagine? In some places, you have a pastor. Only the pastor is ordained. There are a few people around him are workers. Five people. Seven people. Maybe the church is 70 people or 50 people. So can you imagine another pastor who is secure in himself and is not insecure that goes about this teach, train, equip, activate, release, and out of the same 50 to 70 people, he turns the first year, maybe 10, become minister the second uh, time. In three years' time, 50 people become ministers. You know what? This person will still be running around a few people in a building. This person will be taking over the city. Maybe each of the, each of the ministers, those who are called pastors, can be made to be house fellowship leaders and others, evangelists, all that, the whole city. All those appointed to salvation will be brought into the household of faith and the kingdom church will rise and expand. The Lord is saying to leaders, stop being insecure. Stop fretting. Stop feeling that you own the people. Let the Lord empower those he has redeemed. He owns them, not us. Every leader must really give up ownership of the people. It's the Lord's. Present them to the Lord. Let him take them and use them. He wants to use anyone as a prophet or evangelist or pastor or teacher or whatever, or even as an apostle. Praise the Lord. Those in our eyes will challenge them. Pay the price. Pay the price for, to get into the apostolic assignment also. It's not one person. It's a collective. And that's why the Lord is saying to us, don't just be an apostle and discover your title and be okay with your title. What of the prophets? What of the evangelists? What of the pastors? What of the teachers? Challenge everyone to discover who they are. So brothers and sisters, share this video extensively. Share it among friends. Share it anywhere you are, in groups you belong to. And the Lord bless you. By way of assignment, we have these questions too. What truth struck you most in the orientation presentation today? Which one? What are the things that struck you most? Two, can you share three, any three other things you are taking away from the lesson today? This is for you as a person. Share them. And you know what? The Lord will bless you. And we want you to say this, that look, the Father has a purpose for your life. He didn't make a mistake in connecting us with you. There's something of a divine purpose. Open your heart and give the Lord a chance by His Spirit to challenge you to see some things you may not have seen. Or if you have seen them, you are not seeing them as deeply as now. Be intentional to receive the truth. The truth of the kingdom. The truth of kingdom culture. The truth of the Melchizedek priesthood. Be intentional to open your heart to receive them, and the Lord will bless you beyond measure. Let's pray. Father in heaven, have your way. 
do a work of grace in the life of all your people. Bring them to a place where they embrace your truth and run with the truth and let the whole entry be filled with authentic kingdom culture where Yeshua is glorified and where everyone who is born again discover that they are called to ministry and gets the training and support to become who you made them to be. Lord, we pray that those who have rolled for the master class and the global school of ministry, they will run this race till the very end when they will finish it sometime next year by your grace. Do it for your name's sake, O oh Lord. In Yeshua, Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, elect, for being with us.